Okay. I don't really want to go off the deep end here. Um, I just wanted to get a little bit more in depth with the raster and vector uh, data model. And these spatial data models, as you've kind of seen so far, uh, they do store the information differently. One looks more kind of pixelated. Um, but I want you to also know that it's actually stored differently in the file as well. Instead of um, having an attribute table and um, kind of relating that to objects, instead we have just an array of values. Um, in this case, we also have just one what's called a band. So if you have a picture out of a camera or an aerial image, you actually have three bands. You have a red one, a blue one, and a green one because those are the three colors of light that we mix together. So whenever we work with aerial imagery, we would have three bands, but for most of all the raster stuff we're going to do in this kind of intro course, we just have one band. There's one array of values, and those values are stored kind of just in rows and columns. And, um, and we have to be conscious of what those values mean, because the computer just sees 0, 0, 1, 0, 0, 0, 0 twos, ones, uh, different kind of values. In this particular case, um, these values are nominal. They, they kind of name where the rivers are. So our GIS program takes this information and helps us see it. We can say, let's make the twos um, light blue for that, uh, you know, this is the dead river or something like that. And let's make the ones a darker blue. Maybe this is the Kennebec coming in. And zeros, where there's no river, let's just make that black or, you know, maybe transparent or something. So even though the computer has just this kind of raster file, whether it's a, a TIFF or a grid or any of the types of formats it could be, um, the computer program, the QGIS or ArcGIS, just sees it as um, spatial information. A couple of important things about raster. Um, one value per pixel, in our case just one band. Um, there's also kind of in this header right here, if you were to open up a file um, in a text editor or something and you wanted to just see it kind of independent um, from the, the GIS program, you'd see that it stores, okay, there's a number of columns in this particular um, in this particular raster and there's a number of rows and there's also um, kind of the grain or the cell size and this is important because if you can imagine let's say we were making a map of the United States and uh, we our cell size was 10 meters as it is here well 10 meters is is a pretty fine resolution which means that if we were try to if we were to try to store a 10 meter grained raster for the entire country, it would be such a huge file that we, we wouldn't even really, our computer probably couldn't process any operations with it because it would be so large. So for the size of the country, we might use a one kilometer grain, um, one pixel per kilometer, which for the state of Maine or for a county would be way too coarse. We, it would be a very small file, but it would also be kind of useless because we couldn't pick out these features. Um, so as you do more kind of mapping and, and work in geography, the issue of scale becomes pretty tangible. Um, at the scale of the country, we wouldn't even see this river junction. So it, wasn't, it wouldn't matter if, if, our, if the grain of our pixel was the size, say, of even um, you know, a kilometer or half a kilometer. But um, at the scale we're at here, a one kilometer pixel wouldn't work at all. So just be be conscious of that um, rasters the the generalization happens kind of at the level of the pixels how large is each pixel um, because the pixels are how we measure and do operations in kind of the raster data model um, one more thing is that we also need to just be conscious of what our our values mean I've already told you that these are these are nominal values right so in this case the one represents the name um, Kennebec and two represents the name, maybe Dead River. Um, two is not twice of one in this case. It's just a different name for a different type of um, kind of attribute for for this array of values. Um, if we were looking at an elevation model, then these might be quantitative values. It would be zero for sea level, um, and you know one, two, three, four, five, six, um, all the way up to the highest, maybe meters from sea level. If this was rainfall, zero, instead of being a, um, a location on a scale, 
we're at sea level or we're at you know let's say zero degrees Fahrenheit um, zero in terms of rainfall means no nothing no rainfall so you know reference that other video that talks about um, kinds of information because that that's really important for us we need to be able to describe are we talking about you know ratio data interval data count data nominal data um, or ordinal data so try to start to get that in your mind it's gonna matter as time goes on but don't <laughs> worry too much right now so that's how raster stores um, information on the computer and this is how raster is visualized kind of in the GIS program let's go on to vector um, vector is completely different vector instead of of course instead of storing an array of values it stores its attributes separately in a table so each record in the table re relates to a geography in this case let's say that this is the first geography which is a uh, is the Kennebec River that would be one record in the table and we could have as many fields as we want describing that one record but really here if you can if you can see we've actually got a set of kind of vertices that define this line and these uh, these vertices are where the generalization happen in the vector data model um, in this case we've got seven um, vertices that that describe this one line and, or polyline as, as they say and this polyline at this scale works okay um, it's kind of the same deal though if you were to map the entire country this would be too much information there'd be so many vertices to describe every single river in the country that um, you know it, it would become kind of impractical at that point so there still is generalization but it's a little harder to see in the vector data model um, to kind of the the novice eye or the new eye so just kind of be conscious that we don't get away from generalization just because we use vector um, and uh, the it, the bundle of files that come along with a shapefile um, this is the kind of dot DBF up here this is the the attribute information and it and it's really just a table um, it's the you know you can edit this table in QGIS and add as many attributes as you want kind of um, and uh, and this would be the dot SHP and then there's also another a dot PRJ file that tells us what the projection is and it kind of locates it in a coordinate system anyway um, these can also of course be polygons or um, or points it doesn't have to be a line so um, as we go through you'll start to see oh yes the benefit of the vector data model is that we can store lots of attributes per object um, but you'll find that sometimes the tools take longer to run um, whereas in the raster we can only store one value per pixel but the tools often take less time to run so it kind of earns each data um, each data model earns kind of the reputation that well raster is faster but vector seems more corrector and uh, and you just kind of have to get used to the fact that they both have issues and they both generalize so hopefully we'll learn how to use them both um, kind of equally okay good luck see you in the next video